All right, last time we were hanging out together, you guys showed back up. That was pretty cool. Uh, we were in part 27, and we were dealing with discerning of spirits. So we're talking about the spirit life, talking about the core life. And, and the more I go along, I'm, I'm seeing people starting to pick up on this, uh, not teaching from us, it's like, you know, we're some trend, trend setters, but I'm seeing people starting to really get into uh, the, the basics, the core of Christianity. In different ministries, I'm hearing different things where people are not being so superficial with prophecy and chasing after this and chasing after that. They're recognizing and realizing that you need to be strong in this hour. That was a great illustration, uh, Jennifer, this a uh, little while ago about that testimony, you know, of listening to the Lord and praying, just taking that few moments of time and saying, you know, and listening and saying, what, you know, what do I do? What do what's, what's the plans you have for me, Lord? And, and how should I respond? And that's very important because we live in a very fast-paced world. And because we live in a very fast-paced world, one of the things that we neglect is discernment. We neglect it because we go by feelings, we go by facts, we go by the clock, we go by the calendar, we go by all these different things that motivate us forward without first pausing. Does that make any sense? And, and we're running, we're running, 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 and... and there, there comes a time we have to just stop for a second, listen. What the old folks used to say, smell the roses, you know, smell the coffee. Just take a moment and, and get a discernment of what's going on around you. Okay? So we're talking about that last time. So let's just touch a little bit on that again. What is a discerning of spirits? The discerning of spirits is a supernatural revelation or insight into the realms of spirits to detect them and their plans and to read the minds of people now remember when i said that about reading the minds of people it's not in this mind reading uh you know scientology new age thing what it means is the intents of their heart that you can tell me one thing with your lips i can watch your lips moving but the holy spirit will tell me what your mind is really thinking you ever done that and you can lie your way as much as you want but the holy ghost is saying uh uh-uh and it's a really weird thing to be sitting there talking to somebody and you're hearing, but you're getting a whole nother download. <laughs> and they think they're doing great. They're thinking, man, I'm really fooling this guy. But inside you're going, uh-uh, that's, that's, not, that's not what you mean by that. Right? And so that's what it means. Of course, the Lord Jesus was able to look into the thoughts of, of men's minds, but he was look, also looking into the intentions. So you want to write that down. It's the intentions of the mind. It's the intentions of the heart. It's not basically a guy thinking, man, I need a Big Mac. Hey, you know what? I think you need a Big Mac. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's not what discerning of spirits is. Okay? Uh, if you, you're into that, that's you're, you're kind of weird. Get out of my mind. Amen? Uh, it's not that. It's, again, it's understanding. So discerning of spirits, as we went over last time, just as a recap, three different types of spirits there's only three spirits in the world human spirit the holy spirit and demon spirits that's it there's subcategories of demonic spirits of course but there's only one holy spirit there's only one spirit of god one spirit of grace and so discerning a spirit allows you as a person as a believer that when you're in any situation you can discern rightly discern the truth and say okay what's coming at me what i'm saying or what they're saying or what i'm hearing that's the holy spirit or no that's a demon spirit or no that's their human spirit they're trying to manipulate me they're trying to seduce me are you here they're trying to lie to me and the holy spirit wants you to have that because one of the worst things to be is a naive christian you probably want to write that down because a naive christian is a deceived christian a gullible Christian is a deceived Christian. Okay, not everybody has intentions to do you good. I've been in ministry for 30 years, at least 30 years, and there are a whole lot of people who have come in my life, in and out of my life, that without discernment, I could have been really, really f- been frauded, if you will, uh, really hurt and manipulated, in some cases have been. But for the most part, because of the Holy Spirit shielding, he, and you, you could tell this too. I could give this microphone to anybody. And, and we have this testimony that the Holy Spirit has shielded you. Well, that wasn't because you're clever. It wasn't because you knew what to do. Because this was the Holy Spirit helping you. Because I'm going to tell you something. The, the, enemy, the enemy is so slick. 
Let me try that again. He is so slick. He can send, look, he was the serpent. He came in the form of a serpent. He was able to, dis, think about this. He could deceive Eve and bring Adam to a fall in pristine glory where there was no sin. And he can't mess with you? <laughs> Are you kidding me? You're more vulnerable than they were. They had every, God walked in the coolness of the day with them, and yet they were deceived. So don't think you can't be deceived. You can be deceived. Uh, the majority of, the, of Americans today, especially church folk, they're deceived. They're deceived by their pastors. They're deceived by propaganda that comes on the news. On and on it goes, okay? So that's the main thing about this sermon. Now, how does it work in ministry besides just daily life? Again, when you're praying for somebody, you can discern what is going on there when you pray for them, when you lay hands on them, or before you ever touch them. A demon doesn't have to manifest to know there's a demon in them. All you have to do is begin to pray. And when you begin to pray, you'll know there's a demon there. Let me try that again. You'll know if there's a demon there, and you'll know if there is a, a spirit of oppression on somebody. Why? Because the Holy Spirit tells you. He doesn't do it to expose the person. He does it to deliver the person. So if you think the sermon is for you to walk around and say, well, I know he's got a devil, he's got a devil, she got a devil, boom, there goes the devil. <laughs> You're just dumb. Yeah. That ain't what God gives it to you for. Yeah. And there are people that do that. Do you see that devil there? You know, or whatever. He gives it to you so you can deliver the people. Does that make sense? Okay, so it's a protection. It's also for deliverance, on and on. So we gave a couple scriptures. I'm probably not going to go through them again though I would want to, and I could find new nuggets in there. But, um, you know, Matthew chapter uh, 9, we did that 1 through 4. Let's go, we're going to continue now into, this is going to be 28, so I'm going to pass that. You guys got it right, pretty much. <clears throat> Let's finish the scriptures for uh, discernment. So it's, we're, now this is part 28. Let's go to 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4, begin verse 1, and we'll travel around there a little bit. Okay, guys? So, of course, we're using the Amplified uh, Version. That way we can pull out some of these words without having to Greek you and Hebrew you to death, okay? <clears throat> but the Holy Spirit explicitly and unmistakably, so it's absolute, right, declares that in the latter times, are we there? You have a bet you some will turn away from the faith. How's that, how's that working out for you? True. We're seeing people turn away from the faith. Watch this. Paying attention instead. Paying attention instead. So they left the faith. They left the sermon. They left the Holy Spirit. They left the truth. Paying attention instead to deceitful and seductive spirits and doctrines of demons. They left the discernment of what they were hearing, and therefore they went after seducing spirits, doctrines of demons. What are doctrines of demons? Doctrines of demons is not just talking about the devil and a pitchfork and horns. It's talking about all the sins that people are committing, and we're calling it acceptable in the house of God. All the sins that our government says it's okay. And I'm not going to go into the plethora unless you think I'm picking on uh, you know, people. But you know what I'm talking about. We know, according to the Word of God, that's wrong. Okay? A man doesn't lie with a man. A woman doesn't lie with a woman. It's wrong. Marriage doesn't go. On and on it goes, right? Right? There's too many, too many things. We don't need a clothesline tonight. But the reality is when you start believing those things you're told are truth, and applying them to your life and applying culture to your life, then you are following seducing spirits and doctrines of demons because that's what demons teach. Demons teach you to disobey this Bible, disobey your conscience, break the heart of God. It's not breaking the law. It's breaking the heart of God. And that's their job. Bad devil, good God. Good God, good things. Bad devil, bad things. It's that easy. There's no in between. You can't. Well, you know, here's what I think about it, Pastor. I tell you, you know, this is what I think about it. 
you don't get a thinking about it. You're thinking about it don't matter because you're thinking is stinking. And your stinking thinking leads to stinking drinking. That's what my old pastor used to tell me. He said, boy, you're stinking thinking leading to your stinking drinking. I said, that's right. <laughs> Pray for me. Isn't it true? And, and so we have this, this quasi-Christianity that says, well, I can just tiptoe around things in the gray area, and it's fine with God because me and God have a thing going on. God understands me, and this is the way I interpret it. I don't need you to interpret, Pastor. I hear from God too. No, you don't. Not if you're following seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. Now, that doesn't mean everybody that follows that is full of the devil or has a demon in them. It just means you're being led by them. Now, you can progress. I'm not going to get into the seven steps of demon possession, but there are seven steps to it. And one of those steps is oppression, where you're oppressed by the enemy. And then at some point, you open the door and you become possessed. Okay, so we're not, we're not doing that tonight. We're not doing demonology. Though it sounds good, don't it? Paying attention, paying attention. Think about these words, paying attention. That means you're, you're paying for this. You are adding to this. You are willing to pay attention to it. You want to give your time instead to deceitful and seductive spirits. Seductive spirits. So think about it. You know, the, the spirit of lust is seductive. It draws us. It makes us, it makes us do things we would never do normally. It, 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 makes, us, it makes us crave. It makes us uh, act stupid <laughs> out of our normal. Uh, there, there's stupid things, uh, stupid crimes, hideous crimes uh, against, against humanity and, and other things. And, and so it's a powerful thing. And what happens? It begins with seduction. It begins with a thought. It begins with eyes. It begins with hearing something. It begins with pursue, pursuing something and not having that discernment to say, wait a minute, this ain't right. This ain't right. That person who's talking to me that way, that's not right. That married man or married woman talking to me this way, that's not right. What you just said was off color. That's not right. That doesn't belong in this conversation. Do you get what I'm saying? But if you follow that and you're like, well, that was kind of nice. I got a little tension out of that, didn't I? Or I got a little rise out of that. I got a little emotional bump out of that. You better cut that off right there. That's how it begins. It's just like the enemy throwing a little bit of that chicken feed. Come on, buddy. <laughs> Next thing you know, he got him in the cage, don't he? You know how to bring him in, Mark. He, he, and, and that's what the devil does, a little bit of chicken feed, just a little bit of something, and he pulls you in. So seducing spirits, and then it becomes doctrines of devils. Notice the progression, deceitful, seducive spirits, and then doctrines of devils. Now you've been seduced. Now you're in a doctrine. Now you believe that. Not only do you believe it, you live it, and you teach it. That's what happens to pastors. I mean, one example, Carlton Pearson, he's now gone. Uh, you know, I think, I think he sealed his eternity in hell, personally. He, 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 he believed, uh, you know, that, that anybody could be saved, even the devil. He totally went off. The, he, he just, he, he was gone. He got shot out. But somewhere in his ministry, he had a phenomenal ministry. I went to his church one time in Oklahoma, huge ministry. If you all remember, remember his ministry, I don't know, huge. And he was all over the place, like T.D. Jakes, just large, large ministry. And then all of a sudden, he got into inclusionism. Occlusionism is a doctrine of devils. Inclusionism says that everybody goes to heaven, no matter what you do, no matter your sexual preferences, no matter what, it doesn't matter. Jesus did it all. You're saved. You can be a Buddhist. You can be Confucius. You can be a Muslim. You can be anything. You're an occlusionist. You're in. And that's not true. The Bible is exclusive. It's mutually exclusive to the cross, to forgiveness, to repentance, to the blood, to the belief in the resurrection of Christ. It's right there. Anyways, why did I say that? Because he was a great man of God at one time. And at the end of his life, he was a spiritist. He, he, he was shot out. He was shot out. What happened? It became somebody seduced him. Somehow he heard the inclusionism message, and he went after it. Somebody got a hold of him. Some demon got a hold of him. And then it became a doctrine. 
he lost thousands and thousands of people and then he gained them back through this whole new culture it's a very very sad story but it's the truth and we can go on and tell you more but next verse I think you get the point misled <laughs> circle highlight stars neon lights misled by the hypocrisy of liars watch this hypocrisy of liars they're liars who act out their lies but you don't know they're liars because they're hypocrites the hypocrite the word there in the greek means player like a greek player a player in a a theater he you don't know who he is because he's behind the mask you don't know who who is the character well you know the character but you don't know who the person is behind the character that's what a hypocrite is a hypocrite is somebody that comes in the church and says i'm a believer but you live like a devil i would rather somebody come in the church and say i'm living like a devil help me i'm struggling pastor i got this issue i have addictions i'm a wreck i'm trash i'm just help i'm not gonna beat you up you're the one i'm looking for i'm like praise god let's get this thing right but if you come in like oh praise the lord everybody god bless you <laughs> you know whatever it is you do and, and and then lie to everybody you know <laughs> candy and everything and try to <gasps> do i smell <gasps> you will always smell like an ashtray come on folks you can't i smoked many years you can't hide it it's like hi hi <laughs> how you doing you know what i mean once a furnace always a furnace or whatever it is, whatever the eel is, whatever. But you know what I mean? Hypocrisy. No different than the pastor. A pastor sitting there saying, you know, I live righteous, I do this, I do holy things and all that. And he's over there watching pornography. And he's standing by in the pulpit. He's praying for you and all that. He's a hypocrite, right? He's in trouble of hellfire. So misled by the hypocrisy of liars whose conscience, watch this, are sheared. This is heavy duty. You, you really need to hear this. Misled by the hypocrisy of liars. So who's being misled? The people who don't have discerning of spirits. The people who are led by seducing spirits and doctors of devils whose conscience are sheared with a branding iron. Now, branding iron in the, in the uh, King James is a hot iron. You ever seen that? Shear with a hot iron. It's a branding iron. This is one of the most strongest languages and descriptive languages that can be brought out here by the Apostle, by the Apostle Paul. Why is that? Because the heathen, when they had criminals in their, in their possession, when they were criminals, they would take those heathens, especially those of, of, of tremendous uh, murders and seditious things, they would take them and brand their bodies with a hot iron and the reason they branded them was their belief that when that criminal died and went to the infernal judgment of hell they would be marked by that judge and they would know of their sins it was paganism it nothing to do with christianity it doesn't work that way but that's what they believed so they would brand them and so paul was saying these people are so whacked their conscience their mind, their, their understanding, their discernment has been sheer, just choosh, disconnected. That's why people can live in sin, go to church, and act like there's, there's nothing wrong. Literally. What do you, that's wrong? I didn't know that was wrong. I was like, where's your conscience? Oh, it's sheared. You know what I mean? It's totally sheared, and, and that's why people can, can live in sinful lifestyles. I mean, I've talked to people who've been in the depth of sin and, and so deceived, and they'll tell me, I'm okay with God. Literally had somebody, and I'm not going to go through the whole story, literally somebody was in the depth of sin and said, no, what I'm doing is okay. Me and God have a great relationship. I would talk to him, and, and, and you know, we're fine with this. I'm like, you're committing an abomination. What you're doing, dogs don't do. What you're doing, is, and I'm not going to get into the sin, but basically it was the only sin that God destroyed a country over, a nation over. 
<laughs> and you're going to tell me it's fine with him now? Wow, God, God must have had therapy. He got some things right. He got anger management taken care of. No, he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You're the one, your conscience, somebody seduced you. Do you see this? By the hypocrisy of liars whose conscience are sheared with a hot branding iron, leaving them incapable of ethical functioning. If you've ever done jail ministry, prison ministry, homeless ministry, people who are just saturated with drugs, saturated with alcohol, I mean, when I say saturated, I mean the brain stem is, is it's leaking. They think they're okay. You can mention God and be like, God, yeah. God, 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 yeah, God. I believe in God, God. Oh, God Almighty, God up there, you know, the big man. And all of a sudden, they start talking God. But 10 seconds ago, they are talking about juke jointing and hanging out and doing whatever, right? Saturated in that world. But then you mentioned something about God, and that they're back to that religiosity. That conscience is gone. It's been sheared. And they got no problem to lie with people and do what they do with, with no conscience at all. That's what sin does to you. You say, what does it have to do with discernment? Everything. It begins with discernment. I don't belong here. I don't belong there. I don't belong doing this. This ain't right. I don't need to look at this. Because what happens, watch this, the more you sit there and deny discernment, the more your conscience becomes sheared. It's not an instant like a cutting off of the head. It's a shearing. It's a slow burning, if you will, of your conscience. That's why... You know, when a, when a young person begins their travels in sin, I can only talk about my life. You know, you start out, you go to church as a little boy, uh, you see the things about Jesus, you hear about it, you know, whatever, you see the movies about the end times, and then all of a sudden you, you know, and I, I'm just going to make some stuff up, but, you know, you, you smoke your first joint. You do your first thing. And then all of a sudden there comes a little chink in your conscience. Well, that wasn't so bad. And then you do this, and then you see somebody hypocritical in church, and then you get more boldness. You say, well, there, look what they do. And then there it goes again. And then you go further and further and further away till you're gone. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? And I believe personally I was, I was there. I, mean, I was just like, it didn't matter, man. Let's just do this thing, okay? You know. Okay, so we use that example. We've all been there. So what the discernment does? The discernment says, Stop. Stop what you're doing. Okay? Because you can't even think functionally, ethically. Next. Who forbid marriage and advocate abstaining from certain kinds of foods which God has created to be gratefully shared. Let's stop right there because sometimes this trips up people who forbid marriage. Now, there are cults that do forbid marriage because the cult leader wants <laughs> everything for himself. If you ever watched the documentaries of Jim Jones, that's what he did. You weren't allowed to marry in Jonestown because he got the women, which is true. He uh, sanctioned divorce, and then he married the women. That's not talking, we're not talking about that completely. That's cultic. What it's talking about is why get married when you can fornicate. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about those who have seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. A church that says, you don't need to be married, just shack up. <laughs> it's all right, hey. God understands where you are. Try it before you buy it. Is anybody here? Rent it before you own it. <laughs> well, when are you going to pay for it? <laughs> right? And, and that's the mindset. And what happens, it becomes a doctrine in the church, and then all of a sudden, you have a church full of people like that. Man, you ought to go to this church. My pastor don't preach that way. He don't talk about that stuff. He's cool with it, man. Pastor's cool with that. He yeah, Papa Top, man, he's cool. He might, he might, you know, might have a bud with you later too. How many of know what I'm talking about? And 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 that spirit gets around, and the word gets around. And all of a sudden, church starts growing. And what do you have? You have a bunch of people headed to hell that go to church. Or at the at the at the least, you know, a nominal Christians that are barely going to get there. But then you go to a place where they preach holiness, and they preach righteousness. You know when you come in the building, that's what it's going to be about. 
There's no hiding it. I mean, you know, I'm not considered a holiness preacher, though somebody say you're a holiness preacher. I just preach holiness. I just preach righteousness. I just try to preach the Bible and to live right and live clean because I lived the other way, and I want, I want your conscience to be clean before God. What's wrong with that? I want to do it the Jesus way. Amen? So if that's, and that doesn't fit everybody because we live in a culture that says, no, you don't have to be that way. That's too strict. That's, that's that holy roller stuff. Well, you know what? At the end of the day, we'll find out who's right or wrong. I don't play Russian roulette with God. That's all I could tell you. I read it the way I read it, and I'm going to try to live it the way I read it. I mean, that's to me, that's the best way, right? You can do whatever you want to do. Who forbid marriage? So you, you, does that help you with that definition? I don't know if you've ever seen it that way. But, 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 you know, you don't have to get married. Well, yes, you you do have to get married if you're going to shack up and be mar- uh, be together. And advocate abstaining from certain kinds of foods which God has created. Now, there's people, you know, when I first got into media ministry, they write me all the time, you know, if I mentioned bacon or something like that, oh, my gosh, I was in hell. And, it, you know, look, is, is pork bad for you? Yeah, okay, I get all that stuff. You know, it's high blood pressure, blah, 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 blah. But is it forbidden to have? No. No, everything is sanctified unto to the Lord. There's some little bit, and let me just say something. There's some Levitical truths to the Levitical diet that will make you more healthier. I mean, the best diet in the world is Mediterranean. You know, there's some truth to those things. But how many of y'all know we live in a world you can't do that? I mean, you know, I'm not picking on Cuba, but you know in Cuba you, you can't have filet mignon. Let alone lobster. And you know, you have to you have to bless you. You have to eat what's available to you. Or you die. I mean, it's ridiculous. So you have to be careful with that. But again, that's a doctrine. People get involved in that. And they they they, they say, Oh, you know, you guys are bad because of the, the. Are you serious? With food God has created to be gratefully shared by those who believe. Is that what it says? And have a clear knowledge of the truth. I have a clear knowledge of the truth. Peter don't call anything unclean. He's talking about people. He's also talking about food. God's created everything for it to be given and taken with thanksgiving. Okay? Now, I don't think you should go out and eat a rat or a bat or bugs or slugs or whatever, you know. But I think if you're in a situation where a slug looks good, slug it out. I mean, you don't go for it, I guess. All right, next. What did we saw that guy, the, the survivalist guy? What's his name? He, he, Bear, what's his name? Bear something? Bear whatever his name is. We saw, I don't know, we were flipping the channel, and he grabs this big, giant, what was that thing? Yeah, like a big worm. And he's like, well, I hate to do this. I was like, oh! I was like, give me some Pepto. I mean, I'm a survivalist, but not like that. Where's the McDonald's? All right. I'm just kidding. I don't go there either. For every, yeah, declare fast. For everything God has created is what? Everything is good. And nothing is to be rejected. Now, he's talking about food. To be rejected if it's received with gratitude. Because some potheads go, see, the Lord said everything good, dude. No. No, that's not what he means. Okay. So let's go to another verse. So we're still in discernment, right? Let's go to 1 John 4, verse 1. Man, my time is, wow. I thought I could get into the next teaching, but maybe I can. Let's see. 1 John chapter 4, I believe verse 1. Yeah, here we go. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. That's a good key. This is all part of discernment. Speaking through a self-proclaimed prophet. Ah, this I could probably just go till tomorrow. A self-proclaimed prophet. Self-proclaimed. Basically, someone who says they're a prophet with nobody pointing to them in a higher degree of authority saying they are. Or having no fruit proving they are a true prophet. They're self-appointed. And I'm going to get into this teaching later. Prophesying 
doesn't make you a prophet. Everybody in this room and everybody watching right now can prophesy. I can teach you and show you the basic fundamentals of prophesying. When I say teach, I don't mean I can give you the ABCs. What I can give you is the groundwork and understanding of prophecy. Okay? And you have the ability to prophesy on your own, in your home, in your life, and to others. It is a gift. Okay? But a self-appointed prophet, they're everywhere. I'm going to be honest with you. As I look across the media platforms and the, and the places the Lord's allowing me to go right now, I don't know too many prophets. I think the last great prophet that I'm aware of was David Wilkerson. True, point your finger and say that's a prophet guy. There's some great men out there, don't get me wrong. Great people can prophesy and hear from the Lord, but very, I, I just don't know where they are. I, they're there somewhere. I believe they are because they're still on the earth, but they're not on YouTube like you think. Okay, so don't believe every spirit. Instead, test. Everybody circle that in your head or your paper, whatever. Test the spirits. Test them. Test them. Whoa, what, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, I'm not supposed to judge. You better judge. When he says don't judge, it means don't be the judge and jury and convict them without knowing the truth. That's just, you know, I've judged you and you're guilty. No, I'm going to judge you in the sense that I'm going to check you out. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to spend time with you. I'm going to pray for you, pray with you, pray about you. And then I'm going to hear what the Holy Spirit says about you. If I get a check in my heart when I first talk to you, I want to know what that check is. That doesn't necessarily mean I'm right and, and I found something about the person. It could just be my own thoughts. It could be my own prejudice. Looking at the outward part of a person and the way they dress and say, I don't know, Debbie's glasses, uh, those are, I mean, she's like 60s, the 60 girls, you know, flower child, and maybe she's a hippie. You know, whatever, right? I mean, Go for it. Be hippie. Or what have you. You know, we all have that, don't we? We first impression, we're like, whoa, what is that? But that's not what the sermon is. The sermon is saying, okay, there's something going on in here by, by listening. Remember, it's not here. It's here. There's something going on that that person just said to me. Something wasn't right about them. Or, man, I love being around that person. That made my baby leap. That made my baby leap. Man, that made me feel good to be around that person. That's a good thing, right? So instead, test the spirits to see whether they are from God. Who is this? Is it God? Is it the devil? Is it a human spirit? Because many false prophets, how many? Many. False prophets and teachers have gone out into the world. Where are they? They're in the world. So I got to test the spirits. All right, next verse. One of the ways you test the spirits is test the doctrines. The way you test the spirits is test the doctrines. You know, again, if the guy says you don't have to be married to live with somebody and you can have intercourse, <laughs> immediately the, the discernment, you go right to the word and say, that ain't what the word says. You're a, you're a liar. You're a false prophet. You're prophesying lies to people. But this know you and recognize the spirit of God. Watch what, how you can test it. Every spirit that acknowledges and confesses the fact, circle that, that Jesus Christ has, circle this, actually come in the flesh as a man is from God and God is its source. Now, what he's talking about is that person who is preaching to you, prophesying, who says is a prophet or whatever, the test is this. Do you believe what that word says about Jesus? He died, he bled, he rose from the dead, he was born a virgin, he's coming, coming back, he raised from the dead, you know, three days. All those different basic fundamental tenets of the faith, if they believe that, teach that, and live that, then what they're preaching to you most likely is filtered through truth because the people who are false prophets don't believe that 
there's something in their doctrine they may look good up here they may have sounds good but something in their doctrine is off and they don't believe in the blood they don't believe in resurrection power and if you're off on that you're going to be off on many of your teachings and that's the ones he's warning us that discernment not to follow so the lithium test is the word what's coming out of your preacher's mouth when it comes to doctrine what is he teaching what's the atmosphere what is the basic fundamentals you're learning is it biblical or is it cultural is it Christianity or is it worldly that's how you discern that but so many Christians don't do it. Why? Remember this. We begin discerning the spirits with this. The number one problem with Christians is emotions. We do everything by emotions. We walk in and we look at the building and, oh, wow, well, you know, and the ushers. And, you know, if you go to different churches that have all the bells and whistles, you're just enamored by it. I've known people that, that go to churches just for the services, not services here, services. What can I get for my children? How's, what's the food bank like? Uh, do they have jazzercise? Can we work? <laughs> can we work out later? You know, whatever. And they go by for that, the emotional part about it, rather than hearing the word of God. Now, if you can get all that, that'd be great. But we're not doing a, a jazzercise here, <clears throat> unless Christine wants to start a class. I'm not doing it because <laughs> you're not going to see me in spandex number one. <laughs> and everybody said, "Hey, man." <laughs> be like a never mind <laughs> the fact that Jesus so he is the man he came in the flesh and that is how you begin to test him alright verse 3 man I gotta go verse 3 and every spirit that does not confess Jesus now it's not saying Jesus as in Jesus Jesus because you, you can cast out devils and they can say Jesus it's not that Jesus as the man, Jesus as the Savior, Jesus as, 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 the, as, a, as a man and as God. Hypostatic union is what it's called theologically. All God, all man. He was all God, he was all man. He created heaven and the earth, Elohim, part of the creation, the word, the beginning in the, uh, was the word. If they can't confess that, then they don't, they don't have the total doctrine of truth. Acknowledge that he is coming to flesh, but would deny, would deny any of the son's true natures. You see that? Just explained it. Every spirit that does not confess Jesus, acknowledge that he is coming to flesh, but would deny any, say any, any of the son's true nature. Well, I don't know virgin birth. I mean, I believe he was powerful. But virgin birth, that's impossible. Are you serious? God got on top of her and and are you kidding me a seed right there are theologians that do that they, they they don't believe it they don't believe it because it's too it's too much out of their realm of intellectual understanding but it, it's true it's by faith right that's how we take it we take it by faith I don't understand how it works I have no I, I can't not tell you how that miracle took place other than it says that she was endued from on high and she received that, that seed. I don't know how a brown cow eats green grass and gives white milk. And I still don't know where chocolate milk comes from. I think it's Nestle. Is anybody with me? Uh, there's something, but I believe it. I believe the word. <clears throat> now watch this. We're going to finish up. But would deny any of the son's nature is not of God, and this is the spirit of What? Antichrist. So you have a bunch of little antichrist preachers running around America. There are people that, that are listening to me right now, people that, that have family that go to antichrist churches. No, they don't have horns coming out of their head. They're t if they don't believe the fullness of the doctrine of the nature of Christ, they are an antichrist church. You're already in the beast system. You're already being deceived. You're one step away from the mark. Man, I, I wish it was a Sunday. I'd preach the pain off of this thing. And that's our problem. We're deceived because we don't follow this Bible anymore. We want the smoke, the mirrors, the attraction, the GQ guy, which you don't have it here. We want all that stuff. I don't need no laughter. Thank you. Uh, we don't, you know, we don't, we don't have. 
and people are deceived and I, to me it's like this let me say it this way if you got a car and it runs and that's all you can afford and it's the ugliest sin be grateful quit trying to look at a Maserati you can't even afford a matchbox be grateful of what you have you're driving something instead of lusting for things you can't have yet nothing wrong with pursuing and passion and all that stuff don't get me wrong but you get what I'm saying and, and, and that's, that's what church folk want. They want, well, I don't know. Yeah, he's a good preacher, but man, I, I, you know, they, they got gravel on the other side. I don't want my feet getting dirty. Well, I put pavement out here, <laughs> you know. You'd be surprised how many people walk in and, and it doesn't meet their, their taste. Watch this. What you have heard is coming, but guess what? He's already in the world. They're already here. So next time you see somebody goes to a church and don't preach the true doctrine and say, how's Pastor Antichrist doing? Try it. Make him mad. Verse 4. <laughs> Little children, believers, dear ones, you're of God and you belong to him and have already overcome them, the agents of the Antichrist. All right. Because he who is in you is greater than he, Satan, who is in the world of sinful making. We overcome him by truth that's the only way you overcome the enemy you overcome those antichrist churches and those preachers by truth and you say no sir no sir i don't believe you i will not follow you i will not send my money to you i will not go to church there i will not support you at all i'm going to find truth stick to it live it and die with it in jesus name so discernment helps you do that and so we're ending discernment tonight We'll get into something else, uh, one of the other gifts next week. But please pray and ask God to help you with your discernment. Ask him, Lord, show me how to walk by the Spirit. Let me know what I need to know about all of my surroundings, not just trying to figure people out, but life itself. Father, thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Help us to walk in discerning of spirits so that we're not fooled and we're definitely not deceived by the spirit of the Antichrist that's already here in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I love you. I'll see you Sunday. Be safe.